if you have questions like what is Hedera Hashgraph, what are the benefits of owning Hedera or HBAR, what are some of the use cases, or even what are the challenges they may be facing, then stay tuned because in this video that's what I'm going to talk about so we have a better understanding of what's going on. So I appreciate y'all uh, tuning in, so let's get into it. So what is HBAR? HBAR is a public, public distributed ledger, kind of like the XRPL. Uh, it was developed by Hedera um, in Dallas, Texas. It's incredibly fast, energy efficient, which is carbon neutral, or technically they're carbon negative, which carbons is the next thing that uh, the world's kind of going towards. And, and it's super secure. So Hashgraph is faster than blockchain, which that's kind of something I just recently learned as deep and diving more into this. And some of the biggest businesses in the world pretty much oversees their software, which is awesome. Uh, so let's get into the benefits of why you should own HBAR, and this is my opinion, I'm not a financial advisor whatsoever, you do what's best for you, I'm just giving you the information. So, uh, they have high tr transaction speed and their uh, scalability, which I believe is up to 250,000 transactions per second, low latency, ability to handle millions of transactions per second with very little delays, uh, they're energy efficient, Cost efficiency uh, is awesome, and they are open source as of 2022, which when I was going into this, and when I actually uh, learned about HBAR when they kind of first came out, was that they weren't open source. So it was nice to see that they actually went in 2022, uh, and they actually became open source, which helps out tremendously. So you might be asking at this point, well, what are the use cases then? of HBAR. Well, I got you there too. There are, their use cases uh, are included in this and probably others, but I've got supply chain uh, management, uh, digital IDs. No, I'm not necessarily for that, but that would explain why FedNow uh, also went in there, I would assume. There are cryptocurrency, smart contracts, they deal with gaming, uh, file storage, Internet of Things, I know IOTA is kind of into that, but then you also have uh, advertising verification, which, I mean, it sounds like they're involved in a whole bunch of things. For the challenges I see, which isn't really that big, it seems to be that they're not in the media as much to kind of promote who they are and what they do, uh, which that might be the whole entire thing in the first place, why all these big corporations that are actually involved in them on their council, uh, why they do keep it quiet. Uh, they don't want everybody knowing about this stuff. So with that being said, those companies uh, are Avery Dennison, Boeing, Chainlink, some people are involved in Chainlink if you've been involved in cryptocurrencies, uh, DBS Bank, DLA a Piper, you have IBM, which is the ones who are basically controlling on their mainframes uh, the financial system now. And there's many other ones. Uh, I think there's supposed to be 60 altogether. I think they're at 40 something right now. So hopefully that gave you some information on HBAR and uh, maybe to understanding of who they are and what they do. I'll probably go more into depth in another video, but that's kind of what I'm going at here. As you can see, on my screen here, we have the chart for HBAR. So we're kind of low right now. Uh, we were down here at these lows, which I mean, it's it's getting close to there. I think uh, my line puts us at about four and a half cents. So we're getting pretty close to that, 4.8 cents. Uh, down here at the bottom is three and a half. I don't know if I mentioned that, but I'm assuming we're going to probably bounce off of my line that I have here and we're going to start going up. The all time high for this as of right now, which is the last bull cycle, was 58 cents. So I, I use FIBS. We're going to go up here and kind of show you what's going on. You go to the, the high, you come down, you drag it down to the low of what it is now, and that's kind of what you have. My goal uh, for what I'm into, and again, 
and I have uh, financial advice, um, is when it gets close to the all-time high again, I'm going to take out at least my investment amount, maybe double what my investment is. So let's say I had $1,000 in there. Uh, at this point, whatever amount of coins I have, I'll take out a percentage to give me $2,000, let's say. So now I made a little bit of profit on the time that I had in there. I get my original investment out. Now I'm playing with free money at that point. So then <clears throat> you might have these little stabs here after you're going on your fibs. But if you actually go to fibs of 4.236, um, you're looking at uh, $2, well, we'll, we'll just say $2.35, $2.35, which some people say that it'll probably get in about a little over a dollar. <clears throat> uh, other people have said that you're looking at two to three, some people say five bucks. I am more of an investor, so I plan on holding long term regardless. And if you actually look at some of the other stuff, if you wait until the next, not this coming up bull cycle, but the next bull cycle, I mean, you're looking at nine to eleven dollars. So if you're picking it up at just under five cents, that's freaking awesome if it hits those po that point. But even if you're looking at this bull cycle, which they're talking about, it could be either the end of 2023 or the end of 2024 going into 2025. It just all depends on how you're scaling the whole entire thing. But at this point, I believe we're going to start moving up in the cycle in the bull market. So I think we're already at the bottom at this point. So never sell when you're going to at main points or whatever, like $1, $2, $2.50. Most people already have those up there, so you might want to do like maybe 91 cents. You might want to do like a dollar 41, uh, 216. You know, just off the wall kind of weird numbers to sell at. And but if you're already at the all-time high or close, let's say 52, 56 cents, you decide to get your uh, investment out or double your investment out, and you're just working on free money at this point. I mean, that's a heck of a return. Again, you're getting in in under five cents. So anyways, we'll kind of leave it at that. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Maybe uh, put a comment down below and hopefully you'll subscribe. I plan on doing a lot more videos and going in depth on other projects that are out there. But I appreciate it and y'all have an awesome rest of y'all's day. Talk to y'all later.